What's up superstars, it's Phil here. On today's video, we're gonna be unboxing and testing out a new press that we got off of Amazon. This is a Planet Flame 15 by 15 heat press. I've never tested it out before, so we're gonna be doing the unboxing with you guys here. Uh, one of the things I want to cover is, why did we choose this heat press? This heat press isn't pretty popular, it just got released last year in September, and it's been generating a lot of sales, so we wanted to go ahead and test this out and see if this is the right budget heat press for you. I know there's a bunch of heat presses out there that are gonna be better than this one, but there are also heat presses that are in the $1,000 range. We chose this one because it is budget friendly, it is under $300, it is available on Amazon Prime, so if it doesn't work out for you guys, you guys can return it within 30 days. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be opening this up, we're gonna be doing various tests for you. A couple of tests that we're gonna be running is gonna be a pressure test, a heat distribution test, and the most important, we're gonna be doing a wash test to make sure that this has enough pressure so that you're gonna get a good transfer. So guys, a quick disclaimer, we're not affiliated with Planet Flame, we're just testing this out to see if it's gonna be a right budget press for you. So let's quickly talk about the specs before we do the unboxing. Again, we got this off of Amazon, it is available on Prime. The cost of this is $299, and there's currently a $65 off coupon, so make sure you guys take advantage of that if you guys are in the market now. It currently has a 4.5 out of five star rating, with 394 ratings. That's not bad since it was just released September 22nd, 2023, so just a few months ago. It is made in China, but it weighs roughly about 44.3 pounds. And as far as the features here, it is a 15 by 15, so that is a size that we personally like to use at a minimum. It has a adjustable pressure knob, which is really important to control your pressure. It has a digital LCD controller and timer. I'm gonna test if it actually has an alarm to that timer. And it also has a auto shut off when there's high temperature or if it's uh, falling over, things like that. It should turn off based off of the description. It also comes with a safety fuse so that in case you're overloading it, the fuse will pop before your breaker will pop. Um, it is a standard 110 volt, so it plugs into your regular outlet and claims to be 1,350 watts. And the most important feature that this one claims to have uh, is gonna be the slide out feature. That is something that's not common in heat presses and we're gonna see if that's gonna be adequate, if it's gonna be helpful, if there's still any restrictions that we see on there. So now let's go ahead and get to the unboxing. Okay, a couple things I see right away is going to be the instructions, which is good and then the knob right there. So let's take out this. Bring this down. Okay, guys, instructions, which is always a good sign when it comes to instructions. They've got their table of contents here. They've got a bunch of photos to show all the settings that you're able to control with this. Timer settings, it shows you how to use the pressure knob. Clockwise is gonna to be to increase pressure, counterclockwise to reduce pressure, which is common. And then this is gonna be the slide out pattern feature. It also gives you troubleshooting notes. Here are also printing parameters. So this also depends on who you're getting your transfers from and also shirts. But this is a good guide to get you set up, which is nice, they don't always include that. It also shows you the fault points and what to do when there's not enough pressure. It also shows you how to replace a fuse if that goes out. And lastly, there's going to be email address so that you can get in contact with them. And of course, their social media handle. So that's always nice that you are able to get a hold of the company that you're buying this from in case there is anything wrong with it. So let's go ahead and plug this into our standard outlet. Okay, so I have my timer here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and then press start at the same time. This is gonna show our timer. Let's go ahead and set the temperature. So 300 degrees is what I'll set it to. Hold it for two seconds. Let me actually, oh, so it does have alarm, which is good. And then we're gonna go ahead and set the timer. It's at seven seconds, so that's good. Hold it for two seconds. And then let's go ahead and let it fire up. It's currently at 93 to 94 degrees and it's firing up. So we'll come back when it's at 300 degrees. All right guys, it is almost at 300 degrees, 298. I know it's flickering because of, of the lighting. 299 and it's about six minutes and 15 seconds. So that's not too bad to fire up to 300 degrees. Six minutes, 15 seconds, 300 degrees. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and adjust the pressure. This is defaulted stock out of the box. So of course they didn't tighten it yet. So let's go ahead and just do a first quick press. It was very easy on the handle. So I definitely wanna crank it up. I'm gonna go ahead and righty tighty. And as, as I'm tightening this up, you can see this adjust slightly. 
this is going to change the angle and then give, give it some pressure. So this is too tight. So I always like to screw it as tight as possible and then adjust from there. So that's pretty tight. Once I put a shirt on there, it's gonna be really tight. I'm, I probably would even advise going a little bit tighter because I want it as tight as possible. Okay, there you go. So one knob out, that's good pressure. Okay, so now that I have it preset, a couple things with the nozzle, it is a little loose, so it may move during your adjustment or during usage, so make sure you guys adjust it if you guys need to. This is how I show you, it is moving a little bit. So now it's set, what we're gonna be doing is our dollar bill test. You guys might be wondering why we're using dollar bills instead of a shirt or things like that. We wanted independent pieces that we can stick in here so that we can test out any points that are that don't have enough pressure and that will help us identify that. So we're gonna go ahead and get our dollars. I'm gonna run through the corners of the press and then the side, the side, and then the front. So that's basically what I'm gonna be testing out. I'm gonna be clamping this down with pressure. I know that the timer is gonna be going off, but my main goal here is to make sure that the test, the pressure is set. So if you guys keep hearing the timer, don't worry about it. So let's go ahead and press. It's really tight. I'm gonna go ahead and try to pull. Two hands, I'm even pulling the press, you guys can see. So this one was a little light, guys, right here. This side, the top, a little less. So, definitely a weaker point. Let me pop that open again. Um, it was on pretty tight, so I'm gonna do another crank. I want it absolutely tight, so that will give it a fair assessment. Let's go ahead and try again. That's pretty tight. Still moving slight bit. This is a lot better. I think I can crank it just a little bit more. So I did a half a crank right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and give it another shot. That's really tight. Okay, everything else is tight except this part of it. This quadrant right here, even though I have it on as pretty tight, um, there wasn't a lot of pressure here. I don't know if that's gonna be a problem till the very end, but I think I have it on pretty tight. Let me just do another half crank. I remove any possible doubt. So let's try that one more time. It is super tight. I can move it a little bit. Definitely the top is a lot weaker. I think that's as tight as I can pretty much put it without making it too difficult. I'm not sure if it's the construction that's causing the top end to lose pressure. It can also be its most popular slide out feature that's causing the issue too. So I really don't know, but that this top corner here has been an area that has not been too great as far as the pressure goes. So um, we're now done with the pressure test. Let's move on to the next test. Next, we're gonna talk about the heat distribution on this heat press. Usually heat presses have coils that run side to side. And so there are certain areas that have a drop off in temperature. You see these a lot with budget heat presses. Um, the more expensive heat presses are more regulated. They do take longer to heat up, but we're gonna go ahead and see how distributed this heat is here and see if it works. I've got my infrared gun. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the center right here. Again, I have this set at 300 degrees. The, mid is, the midpoint is already at 313. So I'm just going to slide to the right here. 302, let's go up. To 296, 299, right here is going to be 307, right here is going to be 299, and then right here is going to be 280, and then down here I'm getting 294, and then this corner I'm getting about 275. So definitely it is a little bit colder on the back end here. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna be doing is heat pressing our design onto a Bella Canvas 3001. And afterwards, we're gonna be doing the most important part of this test, which is gonna be the wash test. We're gonna take it back, we're gonna wash it, and we're gonna see the results to make sure that this is a good heat press for DTF. So this is the design that we chose. Again, I went for a pretty big design. I really wanted to maximize these design for the heat press. I didn't wanna just use an extra tiny design. I wanted to really push it to the limit. This particular design here is going to be 11 inches wide by 14 inches high. 
So I'm barely, barely a little smaller than what this press can handle. So that's the size of the transfer that we're using. And then this is gonna be the t-shirt. Again, as I mentioned, it's a Bella Canvas 3001. This is a 100% cotton t-shirt. And I'm gonna go ahead and do some quick measurements here. So from armpit to armpit, I'm getting 20 inches. And from the bottom all the way to the top neck seam, I'm getting about 25 and a half inches. So that is the size of the belly canvas that we're going to be using. Next thing, we're gonna go ahead and talk briefly about the heat press. So one of the main features that the Planet Flame has is gonna be this pullout right here. Some high quality slides here. One thing I noticed about these slides is that it doesn't just pop them one way like this. I've seen that with the fancier studio. It only had a 5.5 inch um, slide out. This one actually goes all the way back. So let's measure how far this actually slides out. So it slides out roughly about 14 inches from this point right here because it has a breaker, a rubber breaker here. So 14 inches is what it goes out to. And then when you put this back in, you've actually got a few inches back here. So this is what's different as well. Um, this is three inch here, so it actually should work for a hoodie. You don't have to load it in sideways. You can load it directly to the back. So that's also something nice here that I've seen over the fancier studio with the pullout version. Next thing we're gonna do is actually press our design onto the shirt. Okay, let's go ahead and load up our shirt, get it ready. We're gonna do the pullout. Again, one of the things I want to touch base is real quick. I've noticed that the pullout does sag a little bit. It has about a few, let me see how much lift on this side of things. So on this corner, let's go here. And then it's currently about less than three and a half. So, I mean, it's about a quarter inch of sag because of the extra weight here. I don't know again if that's causing the pressure to sag a little bit here because it doesn't move that much when it's here. It's only when it's down here that it moves a lot. But regardless, let's do the test. That's the most important thing. I do really love the full pullout feature. It's a lot safer than having to deal with your hands in here with this flaming heat and it's also easier to load your shirts. So I'm kind of loading it through. I'm bringing the seam to the very top right here. I'm just gonna make sure that there's no creases. And then I'm just gonna double check with my fingers that the shirt is even. Pretty even to me. Let's just go ahead and normally push it through. Let's see if anything gets caught. No, so far so good. It laid on pretty good. I'm gonna pull it back out here. Gonna get my transfer ready. Normally we do three fingers to, to position this, but because of the way that this is set up, I'm just gonna be pressing it here. I'm gonna compensate it by pulling this up a little bit so that I have a little drop here. I'm just gonna eyeball it. There you go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fold this in half just so that I can get the midpoint. Uh, we usually fold it from the end of the graphic to the end of the graphic, give it a quick crease. I'm gonna double check it again. That pulls my design up here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and adjust it as needed. All right, and then let's just go ahead and kind of see. Okay, so this is pretty close to the mid for me. Uh, I'm making sure that the design is within the platen. Everything is within the press zone. I'm gonna slide it back in there. There is a little bit of a, a click that goes in there that shows it's kind of locked, and then we're gonna go ahead and get ready to press the shirt. So we've got the heat press fired up to 300 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and load up our Teflon sheet. This wasn't included, so you guys will need to purchase this if you guys are looking to get this press. Do you wanna get one of these? But what's nice about it is you can actually magnetize this on the side, so it'll be pretty efficient to use. 300 degrees, seven seconds. We've cranked this pressure up to heavy pressure. You'll see me struggling pressing this down, but let's go ahead and give it a press. Okay, there you go. So it is really tight, guys. And I also like this handle that's down here because it helps me let me pull up above it. There you go. Let's go ahead and slide this out. We'll let this cool down briefly and we'll go ahead and peel. Okay, let's go ahead and go for the peel. I'm gonna grab the corner here, use my hand and then peel. I'm gonna flip this around. I'm gonna bring this back in here. Let's go ahead and go for that second press. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at this closely, and we're gonna try to examine it. Couple things I'm looking for is that shirts normally have lines that run vertically down the shirt. This allows the shirt to actually stretch left and right. 
I'm making sure that I can see these lines visibly on the shirt. So right now, I'm seeing some inconsistencies. I'm seeing some lines run down here, but I'm also seeing some areas that are kind of more puddly and don't have the lines that are visible. Just like the top right here, I see a little bit. And right here, it's kind of solid, so there's really no lines. I don't know if this is going to be enough pressure. Um, it's not the, the easiest artwork to see because of all the colors that's there. But right away, I can see right here, um, there's definitely no lines that are appearing. So let's go ahead and zoom in real quick. There's no lines that are running vertically down here. So I know that once this shirt washes, this might pull back and prematurely wrinkle. But again, I'm not 100% sure. We have to take this back to the wash and wash this, and then we'll come back with the test results. So stay tuned for that, guys. All right, guys, I am back with the wash test results. Again, this is a Bella Canvas 3001. It's 100% cotton, and I went ahead and washed it in our laundry machine. I didn't do anything special. I washed it on hot. I also tumble dried it on hot. So everything was normal, like the way I would conduct a normal wash. Let's go ahead and inspect the shirt. All right, so guys, let's go ahead and flatten this out. We're gonna start with the top. Everything on top looked pretty well. That was the initial thought on this. And as you guys can look closely here, you guys can see vertical lines that run down the shirt. It's more predominant on the eyes where it's white. You guys can see those lines. It's very faint, but they are lines there. You can see them right here, right here. The lines just run down the shirt. But now let's get to the bottom. This is the area that I was mostly concerned about. I'm gonna to try to flatten this out as much as possible. As you guys can see, there is premature wrinkling that's happening right here. So it's all around the bottom edge. This is consistent with basically the pressure test. As you guys can see, the area had not enough pressure. And what happens is it's just basically sitting right on top of the t-shirt. And this wrinkle is gonna to continue to happen over time. So this is not enough pressure, guys. So it's gonna fail our wash test result. All right, guys, let's go ahead and recap on some of the notes here. So we normally press our transfers at 300 degrees. And so that I'm gonna use that as a benchmark. We're gonna go ahead, and, uh, so to fire this up to 300 degrees, it took six minutes and 15 seconds. That's decent, that's not the longest, that's not the shortest, that's not bad at all. As far as the heat distribution, uh, we set it at 300 and we had ranges between 275 to 320 degrees. We did notice that there's a lot of cold areas on the bottom of this heat press here. Uh, this is the area that was hitting the 270 mark, that was an area of concern but our transfers still worked fine because they don't, it doesn't take a lot of time to press our transfers, but the lack of the pressure was really noticeable on top right here. The heating element was semi inconsistent. It wasn't very regulated. I wish it was a little bit more stable as far as the temperature, but the mid, at least it did hit the 300, 315, 317 mark on the front. The middle area was hot, but the bottom was cold. Now, the dollar bill test, that was the main thing that we ran here. We're trying to make sure that this is a solid press and it has good pressure all around. The top part, even though I adjusted a few times, I wasn't able to adjust it anymore. It just had lack of pressure here. Um, this is probably because of the slide. This extra feature probably hurt this more than it helped it. Unfortunately, I really wish that that wasn't the case, but that was what we saw there. So it did not pass the dollar bill test. Now let's go ahead and recap some of the things that I do like about this press. It's a 15 by 15. That's the minimum that we like to press with. I don't like the 12 by 15s. 15 by 15, the slide out was very nice. It's also very smooth. I'm comparing this to another budget press, which is the Fancier Studio. That one had only a 5.5 inch slide but that one was rough compared to these slides. So this is a much smoother slide for that. The ability to slide also gave it enough room to fit a hoodie there. So that's adequate room that you can stuff a hoodie there without having that get in the way. You're not gonna have to load this sideways, which is an inconvenience and also messes up your alignment. I like to work with things straight on. So that was a nice feature there. It heats up pretty quickly again, six minute, 15 seconds. It has an adjustable control knob. So that's also a good feature here, adjustable control knob. It is a little bit loose. I can actually move it with one hand, but it is not terribly loose. I've seen some presses actually be able to move themselves with their knobs. So this one isn't going to move, but if you do hit it accidentally, it will adjust. And so you want to make sure that you keep that in mind. Make sure you're always testing your pressure before you do a big run. It also has a digital display, which is nice. 
and it is connected to the unit. It doesn't have a piece that's hanging on the side and it does have a timer that beeps so that helps you avoid any burns. If it hits the timer that you set, it will alert you so that you can lift this up. Uh, it has an auto shut off so if it hits a high temperature or it falls down or any of the above, it will go ahead and automatically shut off. There's a safety fuse so if anything short circuits or goes out, you can easily just replace a fuse. That's very nice. It plugs into your standard 110 outlet. Any regular outlet, it will work. It is only 1,350 watts. It has a non-slide lower platen cover. This is also included. So this is nice. And it has a nice handle here so that you can actually hold this down and pull it up against. Not every heat press has that. And lastly, it's a nice cool purple finish. So a lot of you guys are into specific colors on your room theme. So this is a nice color that is uh, available here and there's multiple colors available in case you guys are interested. Now let's go ahead and talk about the cons. That's what really concerns me. Now the heat, heat distribution, as I mentioned, um, 275 to 320, that's a pretty big range of about 50 degrees there. That range is pretty high. So make sure you guys are testing out with your laser thermal gun. And then if you need to adjust the temperature to compensate for the cold spot, make sure you guys do so. And again, always wash the test so that you guys can see the results before you guys start selling the shirts. Now, as far as the heat pressure, also didn't have a lot of pressure. That was one thing I mentioned earlier concerning to me. And again, the wash test results confirmed that it is prematurely wrinkling on the side right here. So this is going to continue over time as you guys wash this shirt. So I definitely don't like the lack of pressure that this one gives. So guys, let's go ahead and rate this press. We're gonna go ahead and rate it between one to five, uh, five being the best, one being the lowest. Now the first uh, attribute that we're gonna rate this on is sturdiness. So overall, the construction, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. Overall, pretty solid. It's a metal construction, it had good slides, uh, built-in controller, everything. It's pretty decent on as far as the sturdiness. It doesn't wobble very much. So pretty good. As far as being easy to use, we're gonna give this one a five. With the slide out feature, ability to put on the hoodie, it's just a nice overall press to be able to do all these functions. And it has a lot of things that are included. Now, as far as the pressure out of five, we're only gonna give this one. If it's not gonna pass it, we're not gonna pass it. It's just not adequate enough. So it's gonna get a one out of five. Heat distribution, it's gonna get a three. Mention cold spots, hot spots, not regulated all the way, but that's what we're gonna be giving it, a three on the heat distribution. Wash test, we're only gonna be giving it a two because it obviously failed the wash test result. The top part was fine if you're doing smaller prints, but since we did a big print to try to get to the edge, we noticed that the top didn't have enough pressure. It's not gonna pass that uh, uh, wash test. We're gonna give that a two. So out of five guys, we're just gonna give this a three out of five. If you guys want our overall thoughts on this press, uh, even though it is a $299 press and it has a current $65 off coupon that brings it under $250, that's a pretty good value. But unfortunately, it does fail a lot of the important parts when it comes to DTF printing. So this might be good for vinyl, it might work for sublimation, but as far as DTF with the lack of pressure on top, I would think twice about this, save your money. We have other heat presses out there for you to check out. So guys, save your money, don't buy this press. All right guys, thank you for checking out this video while we go through this press and do all of our tests. We definitely appreciate you guys tuning into this video. Again guys, we ordered this from Amazon. We're not affiliated with them. This was random, so it could have been a defective unit. I'm not entirely sure, but if you have this unit, give the steps that I did a shot, run through all the tests, see if you guys are getting the same results as this because I blindly ordered this and this is a fair test that we gave it assessment too. If you guys are interested in a press, make sure you guys watch our heat press video, uh, challenge review where we test a bunch of heat presses to find the best uh, heat press for your buck. But if you guys are looking for a press that is a little bit higher grade than this, that has a lot of bells and whistle, make sure you guys check out this new heat press that we just checked out. It's a Prisma heat press 16 by 20. I'll have a link up above here for you guys to check out. Um, you guys will see all the details there and what you guys can compare these budget presses with. My name is Phil. If you guys have any other questions, make sure you drop it in the comment below. Make sure you guys like and subscribe and of course subscribe to the channel to support it. Catch you guys on the next one.